Hello, Five Star. We'll give you guys a minute to all get tuned in here. Welcome to the, is it the fourth? The fourth episode of the um, Interesting People series. So welcome to the fourth episode. We have Julie Reaper here, the CEO of the Greater Regional Alliance of Realtors. And we've got this, uh, some sort of Santa Claus up there in the top, up there in the top <laughs> left, the gray. In the North Country. Here in the North Country over there, the Greg Carlson. So um, anyways, <clears throat> Greg's going to do a little intro here on Julie, but I just wanted to introduce her briefly. And um, guys, if you have questions, fire them in there. Um, if you have any questions about associations, just literally throw us, throw us your hardest questions. All right, Greg, take it away. All right. Thank you. Julie, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy days during this holiday season. And uh, we just, uh, we thank you much. And I'm excited here to um, unravel the mysteries of the associations and all these different little things and tentacles that go all different ways. And I know that you are uh, well-versed. And um, so we have not coached Julie here today. On, oh, no. Uh, In fact, I had a PowerPoint presentation all prepared, thing, but <laughs> not the format. So, but okay. Julie has, Julie has been the uh, executive, the chief executive of the Grand Rapids Association of Realtors for the past 37 years. And I actually knew Julie a little bit prior to that when she was a real estate agent. And um, I'm not sure that I don't remember the company. I don't think I want to mention any other companies, um, but it wasn't five star. And you weren't around then yet. It did not exist back then. But if there was a five star, she would have chosen five star, I'm sure. <laughs> and um, so anyways, Julie's uh, uh, a wife. She is a mother. She's now a grandmother of three beautiful grandchildren. And um, you have always kind of lived over in that uh, southwest part of Grand Rapids, I believe. But also you've been, you've been involved with, uh, you know, the Michigan Realtors Organization, you know, the national organization. Um, you're familiar with a lot of the executives in the other associations of which there are 44, I think, in the state of Michigan right now, maybe 42, which seems unbelievable. And um, so what I'm really looking here, um, what I'm hoping to do is to kind of like just kind of work our way through. It's not anything complex, but yet, you know, until I was on the board of directors, I didn't have a clue what goes on behind the scenes. And um, so I'd like to try to, you know, pull those curtain back, those curtains back a little bit to give our agents some understanding of the value that's out there that's going on throughout our organization. Um, and uh, so with that being said, Paul, I'll let you open up. Let's start really high level, Julie. Like, you know, I, I think this is the number one question that people are always like, what, what is the association for? What's the main purpose of the local association? And um, yeah, I mean, I guess just starting there, Julie, like what's a really like, I know you could talk about this forever, but like, what's the brief, like a very brief, like what is a day What's a day or a year? What's a day look like at GRAR? Some days feel like a year. Yeah. Let me let me start with your first question. That's the bigger picture. Yeah. Um, um, why are we here? Um, let's just say for to, to sum it up in a few words, associations and probably not just realtor associations, but associations in general, and we're the same, exist to just its members to do collectively what can be done either easier or less expensively or more cooperatively together than separately. So our goal is to provide products and services that are more affordable to you than you can get individually to help co these 3,500 people cooperate in a way that you don't have to stand face to face with your other hundreds of competitors to try to figure out what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's to really, and there's always that fine line. I'll be the first to tell you, there's always that fine line between how far should GRAR go and when do we step on the toes of the brokers? Um, because there's that large broker, small broker issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a very quick summary. That's fair. Um, okay. All right, Greg, where do you want to go here? Julie, do you know how many associations we have in the state of Michigan specifically? Like how many local associations are there? Um, there's about 44. That's down from 52, but we're 44 okay. yet in the state. 
And so I'm just going to oh, jump into something that we've experienced from our perspective, because we're a member of, I don't know what we're a member of now, like 13 to 14 of these associations there, Greg? I, yeah, I'm not sure exactly. I just know it's difficult because they're so all we're, we're, We've now branched out from just being inside of GRAR to quite a few of these things now. And there's a massive disparity in the levels of professionalism, guidance, services, the value offered from the association, and the benefits of, the, of being associated with that with that association. So I guess like the number one question is, we've heard talk of, of, of these associations kind of like merging and moving towards less associations. Is that something you see happening? Um, let me pull up on the screen here a minute, this little okay. map, um, which is going to help maybe put this into better perspective here for those okay. online. Um, it might not be as big as we'd like, but um, so this is broken down into counties, not necessarily associations. Oops, hang on. I didn't mean to hit that. Um, so here's, he, okay, I, I should preface this by saying I'm going to probably say some things today will significantly tick off my counterparts and other associations. Right, okay. So um, I don't necessarily want what I say to go to another exec and say, well, Julie says, um, right. okay. I might not share my opinion. Okay, in fact, okay. on a lot of these things, we don't necessarily. Okay, fair. I, fair. So by way of example, let me give you the quick picture. Okay, so can you see my cursor? Yep. Okay, so you see this light green shaded part here. Yep, yep. On, the, on the map on the left, yep. The map on the left, the light, yes, thank you. The light green shaded part on the left is the Mishrick area, for, and that's the 11 associations that participate in a single database. Mm -hmm. Consider there are already 11 associations making up just this part, okay? So, those 11, when we first joined Mishrick, they had a policy that they would not share data with or have any kind of a reciprocal agreement with any association that was not contiguous to them. <clears throat> so if some, if Traverse City, by way of example, said, we want to share data with you, they said no because we aren't contiguous to them. We don't share a border with them. This little point here. Mm -hmm. The two counties is not considered sharing. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, I will say it took us a very, very long time being at the table to try to modify the mindset because, of course, it's we have the data. We're going to keep it close to our chest. Um, Grar is so not that way. And Mishrik is uh, kicking and screaming, but they're coming in that direction. So when we talk about consolidation, when we talk about um, mergers, when we talk about reciprocal access, I'm, I am, I'm admittedly frustrated by all of those because mm -hmm. I'm sure sitting at the Zoom table, the board of directors is not talking about whether or not we're going to share data with someone, whether they're contiguous, whether we should go to that state or not go to that state. There are no, there are no lines. Mm -hmm. Continue to operate with lines, sadly enough. And it, and it's, across the board, okay? It's because some of these associations literally have 45 members, smaller than a lot of our companies. They have 45 members in the association, but they enjoy being president, president-elect, secretary, treasurer. They employ an executive officer that they really, even though they're part-time, they really like that person and that person still want, should have a job. And we like going to these meetings, going on these conventions. So, it's a very, very difficult topic to break through and actually talk regionalization versus consolidation. So when we talk regionalization, it's typically MLS, data sharing, mm -hmm. consolidation, which is consolidating associations. Five-star is the greatest example of what a pain in the neck it is to have all of us separate. A realtor should be a realtor should be a realtor. You are a license to sell real estate in the state of Michigan. You should be able to sell real estate wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And we have to work out all of these arrangements. And I think I'm maybe getting beyond your original question. No, no, no. You were leading right into the frustration we all experience here. Okay. So, well, and it's frustrating for all of us. So 
So it looks like these combined 11 associations, like, like we've got it now, right? No, we don't. Each of these 11 associations, even though we're sharing a database, we still have separate and independent MLS rules and regulations. Right. Use the active contingent status here, but you can't use it in WEMLAR. And you can't do this here or can do this here, but you can't do it elsewhere. Uh -huh. Watermark your, your copyright on your photos here, but you can't do that anywhere else. And we get complaints about that every day from members of other associations within Michigan. So there, there is a group trying to work on consolidating or comparing and trying to make our rules more similar. But again, here we are, one person from every association coming together, trying to make our rules match. Really, we're spending all this time on this. In the meantime, the latest update is that if you see here the um, Jackson, this little blue one right here. Oh, yeah. Jackson just made the decision to join Mishrick. Oh, nice. So now we're going to expand to Jackson. And that's and that's really a plus. If you look at the location, you draw that yeah. in the center of the state, we've not really been able to do much toward that east side. And Jackson is coming on board finally. We've been working on, Gar has been talking about a statewide realtor database for I don't know how many years. Um, I was on I was on the committee there for a, for a year um, on oh that gosh. single state uh, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. No, well, that's let, weird, actually because we have an office in Jackson. So um, oh, good. Yeah, so that's great. And and they're switching over to Flex. So not only are they joining, but so they're also switching vendors. All right, which, Julie, okay, cool. Which is the that other brings, animal? Let me let me let me go into a different direction here right now because. So that was one thing, but now I don't think agents understand the difference between associations and MLSs. Kind of go into that a little bit, what we're seeing. And then when you come out of that, also talk about the differences between Mishrick, Englar, and what's over on the east side of the state where they, where they aggregate different um, MLSs. Um, okay, are you talking about the Great Lakes Repository, Gregor? Uh, well, that's one of them. Yeah. Is Great Lakes Repository the same as, it's not the same as Mishrick, though, is it really? No, no, no. Very in, in NGLAR up in uh, Travers, Sheboygan, whatever it is up there, that's kind of more like a Mishrick than, than Great Lakes Repository, yeah, people, right? People don't really understand that um, GRAR is the association. And then what's the MLS? That'd be Flex MLS? Mishrick? Yep. Mishrick is the MLS. All right, Julie, let it rip. Here we go. Uh, okay, so um, I'm trying to um, disassemble all those rubber bands that are mangled together right now. I'm concerned. I don't want to lose people, and I don't want to confuse okay. them bore them. Yep. So I'd invite anybody. I know Paul can see the comments. So if I'm getting too deep or if I'm not articulating it, Effectively, please feel free to ask follow-up questions. So um, the one thing I don't up, have up here is a map of the actual associations. So if you look at this map on the right, GRAR, by way of example, it's association, let's call it jurisdictional territory. That doesn't mean other people can't join it. It doesn't mean you can't sell real estate outside of it. It just means that the National Association of Realtors took every state, draw dirt, drew jurisdictional lines and said, okay, Grower, you're responsible for this area. In the old days, you had to join the association in that area, but that's not true anymore. So for Grower, we are on this map, if I can get my little cursor to work, we are all of Kent, all of Ionia, southeastern Ottawa, and the northern, roughly the northern half of Barry County, inclusive of Gun Lake. Mm -hmm. That's our, oops, dang it, I did it again. So that's our so-called territory. So then you have Wemlar, that's the rest of Ottawa County, um, Allegan, and Muskegon. And then when you start moving out to others, so let me tell you what some of these, so although we're all green, it's, be, it's because we are sharing a database. So we've consolidated our MLS information into a single database so that all of you don't have to go to our MLS, Wemler MLS, Michigan MLS, Kalamazoo MLS, Battle Creek MLS to get your data. 
Okay, it's all in one. Ideally, the entire state should be that light green color. That would be wonderful. It doesn't have to be Mishra, it can be anything. Who cares? We just all want to be the same color. Mm -hmm. so okay. When we, when we talk about this, the orange color, by way of example, is the Northern Great Lakes MLS. So these are three different associations, one representing these three counties, or yeah, three counties, one representing these two counties, and one representing these three counties. Those are three separate associations who share data. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? How what a strange shape that is. I mean, how do you I know. that triangle? I know. And it's because those in between them, of course, couldn't be convinced. They didn't want to, yeah. We have been working with Traverse City, the Northern Great Lakes, um, which is pretty much controlled by Traverse City, let's face it. Mm -hmm. um, we've been working with them for months and months and months, especially um, more so in the past year since the Mishrick. Um, staffing has changed. There's a really, really cool focus on consolidation and, and data sharing right now that that has been renewed and hasn't been as dramatically renewed in a while. Um, we're not there yet with with Traverse City. Part of what we're up against. Let me let me give you an example of what we're up against. Um, you see the. Um, Midland board, where is the Midland? Midland, see right here, this little mm -hmm. white. Midland is its own board. So there is a board that covers Midland County. Wow. When GRAR attempted, GRAR actually paid, paid money to invite leadership from every association in Michigan together. And we met three or four times at, and invited people to join this group to talk about a statewide MLS. Um, people came to that. We had a lot of people, in fact, standing room only. We found out that a lot of them were there because they were interested, but a lot of them were there to find out what it was we were attempting to do to them. Mm -hmm. So let me let me tell you what a representative from Midland said at one of our meetings, stood up and publicly pronounced that the reason they were there was to watch what we were doing because in their opinion and their position is that they were going to build a moat around their county. They were going to fill it with alligators and there would be no drawbridge to other realtors to get across to the castle because they were the only ones they felt experienced and qualified to handle that area. None of you know that area. So none of you are qualified to sell. That's the mindset we're up against. Mm -hmm. So, and somebody said that very publicly. Um, so you try to argue with them. Do you not get this? Do you not get this? Zillow exists today to the extent that they do because we didn't deliver what the consumer wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That person, that person in Midland, that mindset is why Zillow is where they're at. Exactly. You're exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. And so, Julie, I had a question. That I wanted to, I know that there's, we could go in so many different directions right now, but I want the agents to know who runs Mishrick? Mishrick has a governing body. Now, the governing body is composed of two representatives from each participating association. So, 11 associations, 22, they call them governors each with equal votes. So GRAR has 3,300 plus or minus members and another one of the associations has 45 members, our votes are equal. And that seems horribly unfair and yep, there, and we, and we went into it with eyes wide open, but we also determined that we could not make change unless we were at the table to help that change happen. So we went into it with eyes wide open, knowing that um, we were we were not going to get um, votes based upon size, um, and and we're getting there. I mean, it's it's like it's like turning a really really it's like turning a square wheel. But yeah, we're getting there. Okay. Um, all right. So one more. I got one more question, Paul. And then you get ready to ask your question. Okay. Um, Julie, can an executive from one of these associations demand? that a broker has to join their association if they're located in that territory? They may not. They just did it. Not if they, nope, they may not. 
They may not. Was that question there? Let me, let me back up just a minute, just a minute. What they can do is require the designated realtor to be a member of that board in, all, in order for others with the company to join. Does that make sense? So they can make it. So, so Greg Carlson, if you had, um, and you do, if you have um, an office on the lake shore and you don't necessarily want to join the lake shore, you would assign an associate broker over there to be the designated realtor. And then every real oh, the company could still be a member of Brar versus Wimlar. Um, yeah, here's okay. So sometimes I'm going to say some not so nice things about NAR too. Be, okay, and it, right. it's not to impact somebody's decision of whether or not they should pay paying their NAR dues. Mm -hmm. But this is still the one hang up that does not work well with Board of Choice. We're technically operating under Board of Choice. You should. Mm -hmm the Realtor wherever you want, and then access MLS from wherever you want. The one thing that they still hang on to is that any member can join whichever association they want, provided the designated Realtor is a member of that association. So if you have people in Grand Rapids who want to join the Lakeshore, then they can do that but they have then their DR becomes that person who's in that territory, not- We have this, we have one office that's actually members of two boards. And so agents, our Spring Lake office, there was agents who wanted to call Spring Lake home and be a member of the Spring Lake office, but wanted to be inside of Grar. And then there was other agents who want, were inside of Wimlar. And so- um, Okay, let, let me describe that a little bit. Here's, here's why it's really hard to understand. I can be a member anywhere I want to be a member, theoretically. If provide, okay. And then I have the right to access MLS from any other association, but that association can that member to participate. Mm -hmm. So when you say somebody's in Spring Lake, they're already full participants in the MLS. So they also wanted to be a member of GRAR. I think maybe I'm confused by your question. Yeah, no, no. It, it was it was one of those deals where um, uh, we have we have to like okay. So what I, what I ran into the other day, um, I, I'm man, I'm I'm kind of off 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 the rails here a little bit. So uh, our Traverse City office, right? We're one company. Okay, five stars, one company. We have a Traverse City office. We have agents who want to. We have agents from. Grand Rapids that want to be able to that vacation up there and spend their summers up there and want to sell. And so they said, so I have this agent here in the Ada office who joined and it was like, uh, I think it's like a hundred bucks to enter to get MLS access only. But now they're telling us that we have to have every, so if an agent in Grand Rapids is affiliated with the Ada office versus the Diamond office versus the Granville office, I have to pay $250 for every individual office and I'm going, just because oh, that's where they hang out. We're one, we're one company. Why well, does it matter? Let me, let me ask. So joins? are they charging an office fee or is this a per agent fee? They're trying to, well, they, they, they go, well, you're a member of the Granville office and your office hasn't joined yet, even though the Ada office maybe did, you know, so, so, so I'm going, but we're one, what does it matter? Like which physical building they have their license held at? Cause we have to have like a, them at us, one of the offices that are a member of, you know. So here's the interesting point. Ask them to show, other than in NERDS, the National Real, Real, Realtor Database, mm -hmm. if you look at the LARA licensing model, everyone is licensed with five star. Right. If you look them up, they're all licensed through the main office. Yep. You establish branch offices and get a branch office license, but you don't have to physically move any okay. to that branch office. You just yep. have to place them there. Yeah, I, I've been talking with uh, Lori Nesbitt, I think her name is. Um, but anyhow, I'll, I'll, I was I was going to go back to her with some new ammunition to try and smooth this thing over. But these are the kind of like, these are the things too. The other thing is like, typically when you reach out to these other associations, and I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but the answer is usually no. no. <laughs> and I'm always like, well, hey, can we just explore this for a minute? Um, yeah, it's interesting because we end up when we get um, applications from out of the area will actually call that person and say, do you really mean to make membership application to GRAR? 
or is it just your desire to get the MLS? And they say, well, we just want the MLS. And we say, well, then don't submit an application. Just send us your request to be to join the MLS. You don't need to be a dues paying member of GRAR to do that. Okay. All right. Um, all right, Julie, we're going to jump into another curveball here. So, <laughs> I mean, honestly, where do you see it? In, in five years right now, we have 44 associations in Michigan. I mean, I'm not going to, I know you're, you, this is an unpopular conversation, but how many associations will be in existence in five years? Okay. This is going to get dicey. Okay. Um, and I can't prevent anybody from repeating this, but. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping, see, this is kind of why I like PowerPoints, because what I say ends up getting down in writing, yeah. not misinterpreted verbally. Right. right. So take this with a grain of salt. Um, I have some, if this, if this, if this, yep. then that, okay? Yep. So one of the projects, let, let I'm going to guess that the majority of people watching this today would probably not be a member of this association if it weren't for the MLS. Um, I'd like to think that we can offer products, services, and I think we do. I think we sell them individually on why it's a good investment. Yep. Most people think they belong because they have to to get the MLS. Mm -hmm. So let's tear that apart a minute. Let's suppose, so one of the reasons that the MLS database is so valuable and why we're sending data feeds all over the country on behalf of members and others is because the MLS represents the one place where you all currently enter your listings. From there, it gets shared, okay? So you authorize data feeds to be sent to wherever, your website, vendors, whatever, okay? Yep. So, Right now, it is kind of you are kind of handcuffed because the only place to enter that listing is in Flex MLS. It's also why, in my opinion, MLS vendors have such a lock on the market. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we can get listings into their MLS is to use their program, use their upload listing program to get my listing in it. Okay, what's on the What's on the blocks right now, and it's in beta, is a program called Upstream that mm -hmm. the brainchild that admittedly RPR used to be a big part of, and I was so excited about it that it was going to be a realtor kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Upstream is a project whereby any broker in the US of A can up, upload their listings into this database called Upstream, one database called Upstream, and then choose where they want their listings to go or choose to whom they want to have access that data, whether it's sending it or allowing in. Mm -hmm. If upstream really takes hold, if upstream really works, um, theoretically, we could put all of our listings in upstream. I could offer you, do you want to do Flex or Rapitoni or Solid Earth or Paragon, whomever, um, you could use whomever you want because we no longer need their front end. Mm -hmm. You could also, it would be so much easier for you to um, mingle your listings together without an association. Mm -hmm. You could choose, um, far be it for me to say this, but let's just go to the nth degree. You could choose Zillow as your MLS vendor, for heaven's sake. Right. Okay. Um, so where do I see associations in five years? I think we are at a pivotal moment where if associations don't start tearing down those walls, those moats, that um, associations will essentially be, will essentially cease to exist as we know them now. Mm -hmm. and that could potentially happen in five years if upstream takes hold because you don't need the association less anymore to get your listings online mm -hmm. wherever you want them. All right, Julie, I've got a question right there. So when I hear this and you and I, I mean, being on the board here for a number of years, we've had discussions. Um, I'm listening to this and I'm going, if I were the Michigan realtors right now and I understood this, I would become a strong advocate 
for this to happen. But yet, I don't see the Michigan realtors dipping their toes at all into this discussion to help facilitate the merging and the consolidation of our industry. And I'm wondering, what am I missing here that I don't understand? Because I would think that it would be for their longevity as well as helping the agent community versus these roadblocks of the associations and the MLS vendors who seem to be in the way of allowing this to happen and it needs to happen, but yet the Michigan Realtors, who I think could use a sledgehammer right now approach and say, if you can't remain open 40 hours a week, if you can't service these things, you are not an association. Well, you kind of um, you kind of took the words out of my mouth, essentially. And again, I have to be very careful here because we are still part of that realtor organization. And I don't want to end, underestimate the value that the state association brings to the table in their role of advocacy and legislative issues. Okay, there are some there are some monumental things we've dealt with in the past several years that could have had a devastating impact on our industry. Having said that, um, are we a um, single pronged wheel uh, or single spoke wheel? Um, and, it, and it seems like that's where 90% of the focus is. And again, it's very important. I don't, I don't mean to underestimate that. I would agree with you that I wish desperately that they would take this up, that they would be more of a, act more as a business organization to support its businesses because they're in a perfect position to do this. We've attempted to engage them in this. We've asked them many times. When Gene Spinsky from GRAR was president of the state association, we thought, aha, this is our opportunity now to get this on the, on the agenda, on the plate. The problem is that even Michigan Realtors is dealing with the Midlands of the world. Mm -hmm. All these people that are saying, wait a minute, state association, don't you be getting in my business. Don't you do anything. So you have that type of leadership still serving on the board of directors of Michigan Realtors. Mm -hmm. It is the most frustrating political barrier um, to their, it defines who they are. It's, it's so, it's Julie. so frustrating. Do you think realistically what we start to see is you start to see three main um, like MLS associations where you have like the Mishrick, you have Real Comp, and then you have this Northern Michigan. I mean, is it going to end up just these three kind of keep branching like this? And then you have all of a sudden have Midland just stuck here in the middle. And then eventually, you know, people just, I mean, if all the members of Midland hypothetically just joined this association and just listed their properties there, eventually... Yeah, I'm just kind of curious if that's what you see. Yeah. I know that there's real comp is, is trying to gobble up as well. Well, um, your timing is your timing is good. Um, let me just pull up something on my other computer here a minute. Um, from a from a an association standpoint, now here's here's how we have to separate ourselves from. Um, association versus MLS for a minute, okay? So Real Comp and MI Real Source, cursor working, you see how this area over here is, is primarily blue with some spattered green, uh -huh. okay? There's a reason for that. The reason for that is that we data share yet with, of course now I want it, okay? Right now, we have all of MI Real Source data in our database. You just have to know to select that option. Okay, so right now within Flex, you can get access to Lansing, MI Real Source, and Water Wonderland. Okay, so going back to where we were, here's Water Wonderland, this darker green. Here's Lansing, the darker green, and that's why this is spattered because MI Real Source and Real Comp are kind of the two big competitors in this part of the state. Mm -hmm. So we Julie, already Julie, have hey, one. Julie, tell, them how, tell them how massive they are. Grand, Grand Rapids thinks they're big at 3,400. Tell them how big 
uh, these other guys are, GMAR and, and... Yeah, GMAR, Greater Metropolitan Association of Realtors on the East Side has over 10,000 members, 12,000, some, it's big. It's it's really big. So they've they've got two, and, and this is more than just GMAR over here. This is, um, you know, a collection of many, mm-hmm. seven or eight associations. So basically, everything on that map, your cursor is still on. Agents with inside of Flex can access all of that in some way, shape, or form. You can colored. access, am I real source? Yeah. It depends on if the agent participates. Some of the associations in that area are just real comp. Some are just am I real source. Some brokers participate in both. Some boards give their brokers the option of which one they want. Okay. But we're this close to adding real comp. Okay. Uh, that has already been done. So you're going to be able to go to the, oops, wrong way, to this and pick Mishrick, Greater Lansing, MI Real Source, Real Comp, Water Wonderland. We're attempting to get MI Real Source and Real Comp to permit us to mix theirs together so we don't have to look at two different databases for the same area. Hey, Julie. Yes. The key, I think the key item I want our agents to understand here, the importance of this, is that when we join together, they get that automatic co-op agreement. That is correct. That's very important for them to understand. That is correct. Anybody that is dark green on this map and anyone that is, mm, I got to think about this for a minute. Um, And anyone that is well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hesitate saying that just for a minute. Um, you're correct. Anybody that is in the dark green, so MI Real Source is sec- is technically dark green in this area. Real Comp not yet, but getting there. And as soon as Real Comp is with us, this will all be dark green. So anything in the dark green is not only data sharing, but uh, offers of compensation. So mm-hmm. anything you see in the MLS with what they've agreed to share with you. Okay. A separate agreement with the broker for that. So all those other areas that do not have the data sharing and the co-op agreement, if you go over there as an agent and you show a home and you don't get an agreement in advance from that broker, they don't have to pay you. That is correct. Okay. Do now, it. let me let me make, we're real close also with Traverse City, not in a database, but in reciprocal. Okay. So that's we like to use reciprocal. We're not there yet. We're getting there. Great. That would be awesome. Um, Julie, quick, quickly on this. Um, there are so many, you, you have, you have, there are so many documents, right? There's so many forms, right? We have, we've got uh, West Michigan regional forms. You've got GCAR forms. You've got Michigan realtors forms. Why can't we as a state pick out the best version and all agree to it? Why do we have to have all these different types of contracts. In fact, I saw someone, I might be mistaken, but I saw someone produce a Michigan Realtors purchase agreement. Um, why, don't we, why, why, does, why does West Michigan Regional exist if a Michigan Realtors has created one? Um, West Michigan Regional started actually before Michigan Realtors created any documents at all. Okay. Um, so when Michigan Realtors started creating their document, they asked for a sample from every entity that was creating one and kind of put this generic thing together. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell you that, I'm, again, I'm going to be very careful in saying this. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a great believer that the forms you use should be driven by people who use them. Mm -hmm. You see what's going on in the field. You see how it's being used. You see where it works and where it doesn't work. We have a regional forms committee that I have to tell you, it's been around for over 20 years already. Um, Kind of unheard of. This is the one thing we did. And Kalamazoo participated for a brief time, but never did adopt the agreement. So Kalamazoo out of this whole West Michigan area is really the only one that doesn't use it other than that, most of them around us um, within Mishrick use it. So Mason Oceana Manistee drives all the way, well, in the non-COVID days, drove all the way here to Grand Rapids because we would host the meetings. We'd cover legal counsel expense to do these. So 
we tried to make, and this again, remember, was before uh, MR developed a state form. The difficulty we have, if you look at the state form and you actually do a comparison, is you, you have attorneys drafting the state form. When we, uh, I'm not saying we're drafting legal documents, whatever Western Regional Forms does goes to legal counsel for review, approval, wordsmithing, but it works the way you want to drive the car. It's legal counsel driving the car at the state association. So it, there are so many areas where it doesn't work. It, it's an attorney thinking they know better than you who have your feet on the ground doing the work. Mm -hmm. We have continued to expand and invite anybody who wants to West Michigan Regional Forms. Um, recently, the Southwest Michigan Association joined. They were not a part of it for a very long time. They're not using the forms yet, but they're participating with the hopes of eventually um, introducing that in their association as well. Um, Mike Childress this past year in his year as president has been really big on that topic and he's made calls to leadership all over the place. Mm -hmm. Suggested that just getting the same form would be ideal. Um, so the seed is planted. We continue to reach out to other associations. It doesn't have to be our way or the highway. We're saying, come on, let's together, get them all, take the best of all, and let's do it. Mm -hmm. And we'd be happy to work with the state association on that. But again, the state association says our legal counsel develops the form. If you guys want to do something else, you go ahead and do something else. Okay. 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 So Julie, just recently, GRAR, which used to be the greater, uh, or used to be the Grand Rapids Association of Realtors is now the Greater Alliance, I believe. Greater Regional Alliance. Greater Regional Alliance. And um, so talk a little bit about that. And then if you could, and then go from there into HomeSnap and what just happened uh, with GRAR. Okay. Um, okay, so several years ago, in fact, during Carla Hutzin's reign as president, and that was in 2014. So that tells you how far back that went. Um, at that particular planning retreat of the board of directors, there was conversation about our need to be bigger than Grand Rapids if we were indeed going to compete with the Zillows of the world. And I don't mean compete online, I mean just compete generally. That It seemed that Realtors were their own worst enemy. We can't seem to compete with each other, um, let alone have a presence against Zillows and, and Trulios. And I don't mean to mm -hmm. single them out by any means. So we had a long, deep, dark conversation at that time about, um, we also had a conversation about the fact that we represent members in Ionia and Berry County. And all of those members had reported feeling um, isolated, that they didn't really feel a part of GRAR. Um, that's what caused us to start chapters. So we provide services now that are unique to those areas and they love it, love it, love it. Um, but it also made us realize that every time we say Grand Rapids, they're not feeling like they're necessarily a part of that. And it seemed to inhibit any efforts we might make in consolidation with other associations. Mm -hmm. you know, why would Montcalm want to join Grand Rapids? That's not who they are. You know, we found that a lot of these associations are concerned about their identity. So um, it, it was not an easy task. You don't just decide one day to change your name amidst the National Association of Realtors framework. Um, it was about a two-year process to actually get that modified. And again, the intent was to be prepared for consolidation of associations to be recognized as more than just the hub of Grand Rapids in what our members do. And for somebody who wanted to join from Holland, they could do so without feeling like they were losing identity as they were part of the region, let's say. So ultimately <clears throat> it, it included, I mean, boards in Michigan had a right to object to the name. You know, it's kind of like trying to change zoning. You have to notify everybody around you that this is what you're trying to do according to NARS rules, which we did. And we had some objections and we had to try to overcome those objections. And we met with those associations, even though we met with them in advance, we had to meet with more and again, and again, and again, to try to overcome their objections that we weren't going to, the minute our name was changed, come in and attempt to take over their association. Um, so that was the rationale behind it. Um, 
it enabled us to still keep the GRAR acronym and still uh, and not lose that part of what we had at um, on an online presence. Um, so that's that's the theory behind it. So at least those who talk to us seem to be. I can tell you since that time, we've had uh, numerous members from other associations that have moved to us. That was that not solely for that reason that we changed our name, but that was the frosting on the cake that helped them make that decision. So, well, I will say uh, kudos to you, Julie. Um, of all of the associations we are a member of, GRAR does seem to be a bit more forward thinking, a bit more open to change and ideas. So that's been really nice. Um, and we we just, we can kind of continue to face this across the state. Um, you know, we've actually had quite a few agents um, switch from other associations to GRAR up in up north and even across the lakeshore, they joined because I really think the board of choice is an awesome idea. Like let the associations fight to who can provide the best value to the agent, right? Exactly. Um, I kind of like that personally, but. And if that's not us, then we're, then we're yeah. doing they our job. Any, I, I don't way, right? They can go any which direction. Yep. Well, we're about, we're about 45 minutes in here. Yep. And I don't know if you've got anything out there. Just and a Julie bunch of praise questions. for Julie. Just a bunch of praise here. All right. Um, people well, love you, you, Julie. Saying when thank you, said, you so much. Well, my my pleasure. When you said I was being um, that I you wanted me to join as an important person, no, an interesting person. I should be an interesting person. I found myself questioning that because I think <laughs> interesting. We all have our 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 strengths in, and knowledge in different areas, perhaps. But as mm -hmm. I was my frozen meal in the microwave at lunch today, I wondered what it was that made me interesting because I'm <laughs> just eating my handy dandy frozen. Well, I think I think you I think you validated our choice in you as an interesting person today in multiple ways. And I think you have, uh, I was going to say stick your neck out, but um, I, but I do think when you are talking about what's in your heart and what you really believe, I don't really think that's sticking your neck out. And I, I feel like that's what I've done over the last 25 years. By you have. For you the have. Um, here's my one last thing I want to leave. Um, one of the things we talked about that I, I laid out one suggestion that MR Michigan Realtors could use their leverage if they weren't, I don't know what's, I don't know if it's fear. I don't know if it's because I think that if they actually did it in Midland isolated themselves, I think the agents would demand of their leadership that they change. We saw this recently in another association where somebody, a leader went kind of astray and they got pulled back in by their members. And I'm not going to mention, uh, unless you want to mention where that or was. Are you talking about Supra versus Centralock? Yep. Oh, yeah. And there was a big battle between, and I remember, and I won't, we won't name names, but there was a, the association that said that Supra was better, the hands down Supra is better, Supra is better, Supra is better. Fast forward a year and a half. And it doesn't really, it's really not about what's better necessarily, even though I think Centralock is better. Um, it's really more about guys, this doesn't make sense to have this, this imaginary line here. And it was such a pain for realtors to cross that line all the time with all the one day codes and everything else. So it's really an improvement for West Michigan. All right. So here's my, here's my second thought. I'm going to leave you with Julie. Um, I don't get a chance to do this. And I know that I, I, I don't, uh, I don't know what would have happened if I would have raised this at the board of director level in my last very last meeting, which I'm pretty much a very lame duck. Um, but I'm going to still suggest it to have you carry this forward possibly. So we talked earlier about why we're not having these changes. And in, in the, in the idea was that the leadership in these associations will not vote for change. And I think that one of the reasons that this happens is that the people that are in these leadership areas are there because the agent community did not demand to know their positions that they were running at. So we all run, I watched the running of, uh, for the last 40 years, I've watched the running of these events. And it's like, these agents, they get on there and it's all this, well, I'd love to serve and I wanna be a, you know, I wanna give back to my industry and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't give a rat's ass, excuse me. I wanna know what you're gonna vote for. And so I would love to see a questionnaire, whether you develop it 
or somebody else developed it that says, and I'd love to see this get spread out to all these 44 MLSs because I believe if the membership was able to speak and they saw what this person was gonna say they're gonna support, here it is. Are you going to support, will they vote to consolidate with others? And if they had to answer that question in all these associations, and that's just one question, Julie, there could probably be two or three maybe that would be very enlightening. Why vote for a person because you like them, but you have no idea what they're gonna vote for once they get on the board? Why do we do this? We do it year after year after year. The interesting thing is I could develop such a questionnaire and we might use it here, but like anything else, I have to get past their leadership to get them to adopt it, to use it among uh, them. We could, or we could create a go-to spot for oh, enlightening yeah. ideas about associations in the industry and put forth our positions and not wait for these other people um, and, uh, um, and develop a groundswell outside of the leadership to, um, in effect, force them to play ball. Hey, remember when we did that with the advertising rules, Dad? And we made the little uh, the, the little signature thing, and we mailed it out. And you got so many calls saying, "Greg, you're making my life miserable. Stop <laughs> it! Stop it, Greg." It was one of the most fun things I ever did. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> I'm sure, Julie. I'm sure you received some phone calls back then about that thing we did. I did. Okay. I did. Um, and and I was in a catch twenty two because I. You know, I, I talked earlier about not underestimating the benefit that MR brings to the table on advocacy issues, but part of that is communication and and input. And uh, yeah, I don't know how much communication or input they had on that one, or if that was lead driven or staff driven. Yep. I don't know if we know that to this day, but. Well, hey, um, right. Paul. We don't have any questions other than people were praising Centralock. Um, we are getting a lot of people. Uh, people are just thanking you, Julie, for being part of this. And we, Greg and I want to say thank you as well for taking the time out of your day to do this. My pleasure. I, I think this is one of the best conversations. And Julie, I hope you won't mind if I send this to Michigan Real. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask if I was being recorded, did I? I won't do that. It's all private. It's all private. It's for our internal I don't agency. expect anything that I say will will re in this kind of a venue will necessarily remain private. Um, yep. so, I'm yep. not trying to hide how I feel. Um, yep. By the same token, I like I'm a great believer in criticizing private, praising public. So I don't I'm, I'm I I like to be careful in what I say. I like it to be. I think full I think we're we very fair and very. Um, you used a lot of caution, but yet you were able to speak um, about what you believe. So thank you so much. Much thank you. My pleasure. Merry Thanks. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, thank bye you. Bye you bye too. We'll see you later. Paul, what committee are we going to get you on this year? What's that? What committee? You'll send me some options. Pick a good one for we me. We did send you some options. Okay. All right. I'll have to look in my email. So I'm going to make you. I'm going to make you All do right. it. All right. Reach out to me. I'll, I'll, I'll consider it. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.